Already chat. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We gotta get formal. We gotta get formal for the occasion. Today, well, we are gonna be thanking Jonger for the Prime Gaming sub. Rest in peace, Switch Prime. Aside from that, we're also gonna be talking about what it means to be a professional fighting game player. This is a topic I wanted to talk a lot about because I kind of clickbait with it all the time and I always sort of dispute or scoff at the idea of a professional fighting game player. So I figured that we can take this opportunity to discuss what that actually means and then I'll get a bit into what my personal definition of what a pro fighting game player is, get your guys' opinions, and maybe compare it to some other esports professions, esports communities, and see how we stack up compared to those. So what do you guys think? What does it mean to be a professional fighting game player according to the, ca uh, the chat? What do you guys say? Being nice ASF, all right? Live off of your money got from competing and content okay beating me in a set if you beat me in a set then uh i mean me as in you uh you're a pro does being sponsored automatically make you a pro i don't know does it being sponsored you're on tv uh you made it to the big leagues okay we're getting more specific here live exclusively from game career prizes Etc. Being paid to travel to tournaments. Interesting. Interesting. Anything else? Talking to Daigo. Maybe you'll get that to do that one day item. Win top tournaments consistently. So what's a top tournament? Top tournament is like Evo. Okay. Evo is an example of one. So if you win Evo, you're a pro. Street Fighter League is a top tournament. That's interesting. Street Fighter League. Capcom Cup. That's one. Premieres. So I'm guessing this is for the CPT because this is for all fighting games. So Frosty Fossings. That's one. <laughs> Frosty Fosting. So which games at Frosty Fostings are top tournaments? There's a few other things you got to define from here, right? Being nice ASF. I mean, you know, you ask me what being nice ASF is, it's going to be different than your definition, right? You know, I might look at my ROG and be like, damn, you know, those dash straights, nice as fuck. But someone else might look at that and be like, oh, he's spamming specials and he's a scrub and has no neutral and doesn't know how to play. So what what is being nice? You guys mentioned that being sponsored makes you a professional fighting game player. What type of sponsor? I've had sponsorship offers that included, you know, just getting a t-shirt and they took cuts of your prize money. I've heard of sponsors buying you one-way tickets to get to events in remote locations and then not being able to afford to get you back. Is a sponsorship a team that gathers sponsors from other brands? as a sponsor, um, individual sort of business relationship, and you can have many sponsors, is it an exclusive agreement? Like what does being sponsored even mean? Was it a nice t-shirt? Not really, no. <laughs> no, it was not a very nice t-shirt. Their graphics design needed a lot of work. Being paid to travel to tournaments. So every person who travels to tournaments is a pro. What if they go 0-2 every tournament, but somehow have a deal to go travel tournaments what if they're traveling to tournaments to cover the events what if they're more of an influencer type are they a pro player talking to daigo i mean that one's tough that's probably the the most accurate way to, to judge if a person's a pro or not if they manage to actually talk to the beast so basically the point i'm getting at is that as you can see within the fgc it's really hard to define specifically what it means to be a pro so just going over the metrics that you guys gave it's very hard to define like the one that i most agree with is live off of your money you get from competing and content. But even then, that definition is very blurred. Most people in the FGC don't make the majority of their money from competing. The vast majority of even people that most would consider a pro probably don't get the most of their money from competing there just isn't enough. And content is where the line starts to get blurry because at what point do you start becoming more content creator than competitor? And what about content creators that you would not consider to be a pro player? What about pure content creators versus hybrid competitive players who also do content? It's a very blurry line at, the, at that level. That is definitely the, the definition that I most agree with. But it's very hard to define, which I thought was interesting because if you look at other esports, it's not that hard to define for them. To prepare for the stream, you know, I did a little bit of research. I did my due diligence. I did a little bit of Googling five minutes before turning the stream on. And it turns out League of Legends has a much more structured way of becoming a pro player. So I kept Googling how to become a pro League of Legends player. And it's pretty funny because you get a lot of like self-help articles, which are like giving you step-by-step -step instructions from pros. Like, oh, you gotta grind hard. You gotta practice, do your best. And I was like, I don't care about any of that. I I'm not looking for inspiration. 
I'm not fucking 12 of the pipe tree. I wanted to know like what were the requirements to become a pro. In this article, I managed to, to dig up some of the requirements. To be able to compete at the pro leagues, you will have to meet the requirements established by Riot Games, which are being ranked at least Diamond 3 and being 17 plus years old. So they actually have built into the game itself in its ranking system, the requirement for what makes you a candidate to become a pro player. So how come no one mentioned that? No one mentioned that here. No one mentioned, uh, you know, being high ranked online. Isn't that strange how games w which are actually playable and meant to be played online can just have functioning ranking systems where the rank actually means something? Can you imagine a system for fighting games where the actual highest ranked player online, it actually translated to being the number one player offline? It's impossible with the state of online netcode. And also, the, you know, fighting games are a little bit more demanding in terms of the requirements for online play. But the netcode is just trash is the main reason. But can you imagine? Right now, it's like a joke. Being a high-ranked online player is almost looked down upon. It's almost considered a burden. Like, oh, you're ranked that high online? You better make sure you can follow up with it offline. So I thought that was very interesting to see that built into the game itself, in the infrastructure of the game, you just got to get to this rank, Diamond 3, and meet the age requirement. And they said only 2.8% of the player base is Diamond or above. I guess for Street Fighter, if you're Ultimate Grandmaster, aren't you already in like the 1%? Aren't okay. you in like the less than 1%? I don't know what the numbers are, but are we all pros? They go a little bit more in detail. They mentioned that once you reach those ranks, there's something called the Challenger Series, where your team must have five to seven players, you must all be 17 years old and be ranked at least Diamond 3, and then you op enter the Open Qualifier Tournament, and then uh, you gotta win. Once you get in, I guess you're a pro. And then I guess the goal is to get drafted by a more serious team. So if you win the Challenger Series, you automatically qualify for the League of Legends Championship Series. So they have a whole sort of tiered system for what league you get into. And they structure it very linear linearly so that you can work your way up through different leagues. I mean, I don't want to compare the competitive structure of League of Legends to fighting games because that totally spits in the face of the concept of open bracket tournaments, which fighting games prides itself so much upon. But this does provide a, a ladder to climb. It does give you a direct linear structure to work through in order to become a pro player and they have a way to quantify and qualify what level you're at, which fighting games definitely do not have. So, you know, I wanted to look at, I wanted to like compare a little bit of like League of Legends versus fighting game pros. Have I ever played League of Legends? No, I know nothing about it. But, I mean, you got, you got people like Viper, you know, good old Viper. You know, you guys know your favorite uh, League of Legends pros, right? Throw some out in the chat. You got, you got Knight. Who could forget about your boy Knight? And then, of course, I got to include Faker. I got to be honest, Faker is the only guy I've ever heard of, of these three. I just Google League of Legends pros and they actually have a list of pros, all with very nicely cut bus shots all with very high quality PNGs, right? It was very easy to find these pictures, I gotta say. And then let's talk about some fighting game pros. So let's talk about based on like even your guys' definition, we can go through some fighting game pros. Daigo, of course, we'll leave him, we'll leave him standing large and in charge because you know, he deserves to. I think we can all agree Daigo is a fighting game pro if not the fighting game professional. Justin Wong, of course. Shout out to, to Justin Wong, Spirit Fingers Wong. That's my captain right there. And shout out to Street Fighter League. I can only find these pictures in PNG format of any Street Fighter player because of Street Fighter League. I think we can all say Punk. Punk's a pro. He's pretty good. One of the most winningest players. Sonic Fox? I don't, I don't have a Sonic Fox PNG ready. Let's see. Can we get can we get one? All right. We got Sonic Fox. When you search for transparent images, all you see is his, his furry avatar. Here's one. Tokido. Tokido, that's definitely a professional fighting game player right there, if I've ever seen one. Uh, there's, a, there's a few more. We gotta include the people who win, right? People who win elite tournaments. Idom, he won Capcom Cup. He's gotta be a pro, based on your guys' definition. So, you know, Daigo, he wins a lot. He makes money off competing in content, and he's nice as fuck. Same thing with Sonic, Fox, and Punk. Tokido, he's here doing sponsored photo shoots. You know, he's making sponsorship money. He must be a pro. Justin, same thing. Idom's winning uh, top tournaments like Capcom Cup. He's got to be a pro. People said Street Fighter League. So if you're in Street Fighter League, you're a pro. If you're if you're in Street Fighter League, you're a pro, right? So maybe throw a little bit of Brian F in there. You know, I was in Street Fighter League at one point in time. Look, we could have oh, we could have all been on one team. Idom could have had you there. Would have been great. We're, we're already matching. Uh, Strider, you know, it one Strider. He's a pro. But what about MDZ Jimmy? What about good old Jimmy? 
You know, I get YouTube comments every day of people asking me, Brian, when are you gonna play Jimmy in a set? I think they think that all the YouTube people live next to each other. I've heard that Jimmy's uh, primary source of income. He's a full-time uh, streamer and content creator for Street Fighter V. This is his primary source of income. What about Corey Gaming? Fighting game content 24-7. Gerald from Corey Gaming? I mean, he makes all of his money from fighting game content creation. Content creator is different. That's true. That's true. Content creator is different. I, I agree so. Oh, Sajam? Sajam would be a pro fighting game content creator? So what context? Let's take a look back at our, our, our rules we set up. Being nice as fuck. So the thing is, it wasn't a combination of all of these requirements. These were each individual requirement. So I think multiple people on the list match being nice as fuck. Live off your money you get from competing and content. So the thing is, this is pretty intertwined. So uh, Say Jam and Corey Gaming do that. Beating me in a set. Uh, I... If it's a chat, I'm pretty sure everyone on that list could probably beat you in a set. Being sponsored? Yeah, these players are sponsored. I mean, Sajam has had sponsorships in the past, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not, actually. Corey Gaming does sponsorships on the YouTube channel. Jimmy probably has a sponsorship. I'm sponsored. You're on TV. Well, you know, these guys have been on TV. Most, uh, Sajam's been on TV. E-League was on TV. We could put more people in there for going being on TV. Live exclusively from game career prizes, etc. I mean, that's what Justin Wong was all about. Daigo, Punk, Idom. Makes sense. Um, talking to Daigo. We're all talking to Daigo right now, so we're all good. Win top tournaments consistently. Now, this was where a lot of people whittle off. There's a few on there. Being high ranked online, Idom's ranked 11, so you can't ignore that. I don't think anyone on this list violates any of these rules or all of these rules. They violate some of these rules. But I think we have to look at a, a more cohesive view of what it means to be a pro. The reality is there's no set definition of what it means to be a pro fighting game player because there's no league or structure that establishes what a pro is. And almost every other sort of competitive environment, be it League of Legends, be it bodybuilding, be it whatever random sport you want to think of, there's something that is a governing body that establishes what a pro is. To be a pro bodybuilder, you gotta get a pro card. You gotta win a competition and then get a pro card which will allow you to compete in pro competitions. These things are not open bracket format. Fighting games have long been based on the community value of always having open bracket tournaments that anyone can be the best to show up on that day and win. And because of that, we don't all get nice fancy PNG photos and look like a K-pop boy band. This is what we look like instead, because it's open to anybody. It's open to anybody to join. It's open to anybody to compete. And because of that, there's a lot of uh, differences. People can't make consistent money. You can't just become a pro and be licensed and make a salary. It depends on how you're doing that day. You gotta win the whole tournament or else you don't make any money at all, practically, in fighting games. The top League of Legends players aren't allowed to have girlfriends. Are you kidding me? I don't believe it. These dudes are making bank. They're the hottest celebrities in Korea. I don't know what you're talking about. So here's my view of it. Here's my view of it. I believe you're a fighting game player if your primary source of income is competition in fighting games. Or I have to rephrase. It's a little it's a little blurry. It's your primary source of income stems from competing in fighting games either through competing itself with prizes, sponsorship money from your success in competing, or content that is driven by your notoriety and success that comes from competing. So I think that's the key distinction you'd have to make. I think a lot of people can make money from content and they're popular fighting game players, but then their money doesn't come from them being competitive. It's a little different. So if we go by that definition, say Jam, he doesn't compete, he's out of there. MDC Jimmy, he doesn't he doesn't make money from competing in tournaments. He's just a, a competitive, hybrid, competitive content creator. I don't make my primary living off of anything FGC related. This is just a hobby for me. Corey Gaming, he's just a pure content creator. Strider, who was in last year's Capcom Cup and it's been in Capcom Cup three times total. Once for Street Fighter 4, twice for Street Fighter 5. Currently in the highest ranked team in Street Fighter League. Uh, this is not his job. He's unsponsored, I believe unsponsored, and has a full-time job outside of fighting games. So nope, that leaves these guys. Oh wait, okay, this is a little weird. Justin Wong, the most winningest fighting game player pretty much of all time, is he? A pro fighting game player? He has plenty of sponsors. He has more sponsors than all of these players combined. But he doesn't really compete anymore. He produces tons of fighting game content. He's sponsored by Panda Global now as a content creator or something? As a papa? I don't know. He had a weird title. He's Panda Global staff. He's not a sponsored player. So he, he doesn't really count to me. He's not really a pro fighting game player, right? He's professional in terms of skill dude he's one of the best of all time bar none i don't think that's where his primary source of income is is there a statue of limitation limitations on your pro card that, that doesn't exist right 
It's a gray area. I think if he wanted to be primarily a pro fighting game player any day, he could. It's just not his focus right now. If this was League of Legends, he would not be competing in the LCS or whatever it's called. He would, who does not? But here are the fighting game pros we're left with. So this makes sense. Punk, top competitor, sponsored by Panda Global. Its primary source of income is competing and also makes content creation on the side. Similar story for Tokido and Daigo and Sonic Fox, all sponsored players. Primary focus is through competing, they're able to have other monetary streams. Okay, what about this guy down here though? This is kind of an outlier. Prior to last Capcom Cup, IDOM had won zero premier tournaments, had barely traveled to any tournaments total, has never been sponsored up till that point or after. Yet he probably makes more money from competing consistently than all the fighting game players on this list as of 2020, winning Capcom Cup, the end goal of every season, the world championship equivalent for Street Fighter V, he won it, takes home money every week from NLBC, which collectively adds up to a lot over the course of a year. Not sponsored. It's not affiliated with any, any team. You look at League of Legends standards, you cannot be competing in the LCS unless you're affiliated with a team. You have to join the league as a team. But if we're getting strict standards, IDOM is not a professional fighting game player. But that's kind of where I draw the line. That's kind of where I draw the line. I think IDOM represents why being a pro fighting game player is almost meaningless and almost a non-existent title to have because what does it matter if you're nice as fuck? And that's the whole point of the FGC. And that's what separates us from the League of Legends, from the Dotas, from the Call of Duties, from all the other esports, hand me up pro cards. If you come in and you're nice as fuck, it doesn't matter if you have any of those other requirements you can win. Are you a pro? Maybe not. Maybe you are. Who cares? This is why I always say I'm not a pro fighting game player. I mean, I'm nowhere near these guys level, but people always mention like, oh, uh, so-and-so is a pro fighting game player. And the reality is no. Even from lax definition, there's very few fighting game players who can make a living off this. I mean, you saw how far down the list I had to go to the top of the top of the top of the top before we can get people who are actually making a full-time income from fighting games. At that point, you have so few pros, you don't even have a tournament to fill with them. Look at Capcom Cup. Fujimura Pro, Sonic Box 801 Strider, don't let it fool you. Not a pro, very much not a pro. Zenith, sponsored. I don't know if he's making a full-time living off of this though. Knuckle Dew, unsponsored, doing his thing. So, you know, I think a lot of these people are doing it full-time. Mago's doing it full-time, not sponsored by anybody. IDOM, not sponsored by anybody. A lot of players in here are doing it full-time, but a lot of them don't have sponsors and a lot of them aren't full-time. And these are the, the top 32 in the world for Street Fighter. So I think there's a beauty in that. But that also means to me, don't put anybody on a pedestal and also understand that there's no money in this. I mean, there is, but it's more, it's not a career. It's more like mining, like going to a, a gold mine and trying to strike a gold nugget. You're not guaranteed any money from this. Very few people are able to do that. So the concept of a pro, it's not really a thing. Very few people are pros. If you see players on stream, doing work, they're just nice as fuck, but it's just for the passion of it all. Yeah, there's actually, there's probably way more consistent money doing content creation than competing. Way more, like people who went the Justin Wong route, um, definitely are able to produce more consistent income than just competing alone. If that's what you're interested in, I mean, build a brand and produce content, which I think we need to do regardless as a community, but that's why I'm saying there's very blurred lines. There's no pro fighting game players. Just put in work if you want to compete. Don't put players on a pedestal. Nobody does this full time. Just play the game. This is where I sell out to the YouTube audience. Hey guys on YouTube, listen, if you enjoyed this video, I gotta say that 50% of my viewers aren't currently subscribed to the channel. I don't know what it is you guys are watching, but not subbing. But if you made it this far, you must be liking the content in some way, shape or form. So if you wanna help me become a full time fighting game pro, you gotta sub to the channel. It's the only way, it's the only way. Or, you know, keep me amateur. I kind of like it this way too. Either way, appreciate it.